Are you looking for a way to back up your NAS? Do you not want to have to invest in a backup tape system? Well, stay tuned. I'm going to show you how to back up a NAS with a NAS. Welcome to another edition of Tech Bytes with Run Nutter, your home for all things relating to smart home technology. In this episode, we're going to talk about how to use your NAS as a backup system. Yeah, that's right. Hi, I'm Ron Nutter, and we're going to be working on this together. This content is also available as an Amazon flash briefing or podcast. Please go to techbytesWithRonNutter.com for more information. For any items mentioned in this episode, there are affiliate links in the description. If you click on these links, I will get a small commission, but that won't affect the price you pay for the item. If you want to get notified when new content is uploaded, please click on subscribe and enable notifications. Here's what we're going to be covering in this video, and that's how to use your NAS as a backup system. First, can NAS be a backup? We'll talk about the required items, and then how many NASs do you need, and you want them local or remote? All those will get to rest here shortly. One of the first things that I heard when I got a NAS is, well, NAS is, can't, can't be a backup. Well, you get lulled into, I guess, a false sense of security. And that's where, well, I've got RAID 5 or RAID 6 or RAID 10. I'm, I'm covered. Well, the answer is yeah, but. And it's a big but. If you have multiple drive failures, you're kind of up a creek without a paddle. If you have a power supply fail and maybe when it fails, it takes out the motherboard. Heaven forbid you have a major disaster and where you have your NAS server is obliterated or underwater to where the server basically is beyond repair at that point. But there is another way. And let's get into it because some companies have been doing this for, for quite a while. One NAS, no, it's not a backup. You, if you have more than one drive fail, regardless of how many precautions you take, you're basically going to be up the Peruel Creek without a paddle. Now, when you've got two NASs, that puts you in a little bit different situation because now you've got a level of redundancy. You're insulated from the motherboard, power supply, multiple drive failure. So there, there's a lot of pluses to it at that point. If you can go to three NASs, well, now you've got two backups. And that's when you want to have a discussion of, do you have one of them remote? And which is not a bad idea. You can put one in the cloud if you want to, but there's going to be a lot of costs associated. But if you've got a family member nearby, Maybe you offer to pay for their internet connection. You can basically put a server over at their place and you're now a little more insulated from there being a problem. So if you lose both of your NASs where you are, you still got a third one. The other thing that we'll have to look at is what are your NAS options? Well, if you've been following my video series, then this is going to be something that it's, you've got more than one option. And this is where it's a good thing to, to think about some of this. You know, I've been doing Unrate and I've, in the short time I've had Unrate up and running, I really like it. It's very straightforward. There's some adjustments I'm happy to make, but it's an option. Earlier uh, last year, you saw me do something on FreeNAS, which is now TrueNAS. It's also an option. Then the other one I've done videos a little bit further back than that is open media vault each one of these has its own pluses and minuses and this is where i encourage you before you decide to jump off that cliff and, and get into some of this is experiment with the different options unray does have a licensing fee but it's not out of the realm of being reasonable. TrueNAS is free, although if you want some additional support, then that's an option. Open Media Vault is no charge for it unless you want to get into a support situation, but that's that's beyond the initial layout. Here's some things to think about. If you want something you can pick up and go quickly, and I'm talking if there's an evacuation order wherever you happen to live and you got a bug out like you got maybe less than an hour's notice or you know maybe no notice at all, can you grab that server quickly? And don't think about trying to take the drives out. That's the last thing you need. Just pull the power. I mean, if you can't, don't have time to do a controlled shutdown, but pull the power and get it in your vehicle. And at least when things get back to where they were before you can you've got at least your backup there now here's an interesting use case open media vault is the only one of these three that can run on a raspberry pi you're going to hear some people say oh you shouldn't use external usb drives well we all use what we have to and this is an option for a nas that you can bug out quickly i mean you can put it in a small pelican case between the raspberry pi the power supply and your usb drives and hopefully you're running a powered hub this is an ideal bug out nas because you can grab it in just a couple of minutes minutes and it doesn't take a lot of room. You've got all these different possibilities and it's not to say you can't do it with Unrate, especially if depending on how you set up your drives, but this is an option to think about. So if having one remotely is not an option or you want an additional layer of what if planning, Open Media Vault has an interesting play in this because you can set one up on a Raspberry Pi and I've run one, I actually run two for several years. I like it. It's a little bit different interface, but it's nothing that you can't handle. But again, something to think about. Now, one question we touched on a little bit earlier was how many NASs do you need? My answer is 
How many do you want? Because there's no wrong answer. But something to think about is when you have them, keeping them all synchronized. And there's uh, our sync. I think there's no one called our copy. There, there's multiple options where you can automate some of this. But automation may not be the ultimate answer. And we'll show one solution here in just a bit because this is a good opportunity if you've got some problems with files that can't be copied to know that now to be able to cover things. So normally, and what I'm showing here is when you go to put things on the NAS, you're uploading them from whatever computer you've got or laptop. At some point, we've got to have synchronization. So the primary system you're uploading to, which is A, needs to go to B, and then ideally to C. Now, both of those can be fed from A, or you can go A to B, and then B can talk to C. Your, your call at that point. If you have to if you can't automate your synchronization then what you can do is using a program i'm going to show you here in just a bit and it's available on both windows and mac and i think they may have a linux client you basically pull the files from a copying down to B. Now, what I would encourage you to do, and I did this when I was first setting up my NAS, is because getting into rsync was getting into some command line Linux that I wasn't sure I wanted to go to at that point. Plus, if there's a problem, I'd kind of like to know as it's going along instead of after the fact. I copied from A to B, and this is where I found some problems. And this is a good reason to do it this way, because I could see visually on the screen that there were certain files I had a problem with. Well, I was going from free NAS down to unrate. So with some files that unrate didn't know how to deal with and i think because of the way i may have left things running on freenas it didn't know how to get the files over because they either were left open or there was a problem but anyway i found that at that point so that gave me a chance to clean up the files as i went that got me in a probably a pretty good situation better than i had been because i didn't know that there was an initial problem now once you've got things moved over on to your secondary NAS or B NAS, as I've got it labeled here, then you can go through and say, okay, now go from B to C. And there you should have a very flawless copy system because you've already gotten your cleanup done. Because when you went from here, you were doing some cleanup. And when I went from A to B for about a three terabyte system, and I'm, granted, I've got a small NAS at this point, but I'm trying to get ahead of the game on things that I wanted to know I had a problem. But even with three terabytes, and what I did is I put the computer running, the file synchronization utility, and all three NASs on the same network switch. So that way you didn't have to traverse multiple switches or go to other parts of the house where I've got some other things set up. It was all contained locally because I knew that was going to be my best chance to get things up and running quickly. That took me almost 48 hours to do. And I was surprised. Roll forward to once I got the file cleanup done and I went from the secondary NAS to the tertiary NAS or C NAS as I've got it labeled here. That took a little over nine hours. It, of course now B and C were both unrate. Here I was going free NAS to unrate. A little bit of a variable but having you, you can have this all be one distribution of the NAS. It's up to you. There's no right or wrong way. I just happen to be running unrate on a couple of other systems and I'm just curious to see how well they would work. There are some other copying options I'm going to look at as I get more runtime with this one, but still, this was an option to look at. This is the app I was referring to earlier, and I just was having a senior moment, couldn't remember the name right of hand, and it is free file sync. What you'll need to do on a Windows system is you'll have to go through your interface here and map drive letters. So at this point, you already see that I've got Unraid, and there's one of my OMB systems, but I was going from free NAS to there. Now, it, you may get an error on this if your share names are not the same or if the directory name you're going to is not the same. Ideally, these should all match and your capacity really needs to be matched. Otherwise, you don't want to be filling up one system when another one's got plenty of room, but I digress. So we've got all these systems in place and you can see that I can, I'm mapping drives to it. This one, it doesn't see right. Oh, because that one I didn't turn on. Okay, that's my fault. But you kind of see where this is going at this point. And those are both the system I got turned off so sorry about that one but you see where things are going and what we'll do is i've done the initial sync so you've got options to go with here you can go two way so you can if you want to so if you're sometimes putting files on one system and not the other you can make sure they match what i do at this point i've been doing mirroring so i take one system copy it to the other one so what will probably happen the next time you do it is it's going to realize oh hey i'm going to blow away all these other files and start from scratch now here are the different options you when i first set this up i did mirror so that's going to synchronize one now to another. If you're going to just update, then that may be faster as you're doing successive copies to it. Custom lets you do a whole bunch of stuff. And this is where I found going through the process that it allowed me to see what directories maybe I wanted to exclude on FreeNAS that I didn't want to bring over. Like I said, you just got to have your, your drives set up and see at this point, it's already got that map. So we're going to go browse it. 
this point, we're just going to select the folder because we're going to tell it to copy everything. So it's going drive M. Then we would have the other system over here. And then when you're ready to go, you just click on synchronize and then it's a hurry up and wait situation. So there is no wrong way to do this. And there's no one right way to do this. Look at how your system is currently set up now with the way your drives are set up. See what you've got around that you can do without purchasing any additional hardware. You're also going to want to think while you're doing this, and there's going to be a card that should be right up here or over here, one of the two, where we talk about setting up a UPS, because this is of paramount importance when you're synchronizing between NASs because my power company just during the month of July had two outages. So that pretty much kicked me in the can because I could have lost some data while it was trying to replicate or had damaged one of the NASs. So one thing you need to think about. Now, another thing is make sure that you're looking at unrated as one of your options. And you're going to see my intro video right there to where you can get an idea of unrate. I'm not pushing it on any I'm not getting sponsored by them, but I've been impressed in the short time I've been running it that it is very flexible. It's one thing easier to get you where you've got your data duplicated on more than one system. So like I said, there's no one right way. There's no wrong way to do this. It's whatever is going to get you protected as much as possible. If you're watching this on YouTube, you're going to see videos on the screen that are similar to the one you've just watched or other content that YouTube thinks you might be interested in. If this video helps you or provides value, please click on that like button, thumbs up. If you haven't already subscribed to the channel, please click on subscribe now and enable notifications. We'll see you in the next episode. Thanks for watching.